folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today on the channel, I want to talk about who do you need to watch out for after it hits the fan. There's this concept that's being thrown around the YouTube prepping community called werewolf preppers. So I'm going to weigh in on this idea today and talk about whether or not these people, if they even exist, are anything to worry about whatsoever. Now, before we do that, I want to make sure that my microphone is adjusted and I want to share something with you guys today. You've seen the toilet paper tablets. That's what I'm famous for, believe it or not. Well, guess what? We went bigger this time. I asked the company, I'm like, look, the all American preppers out there need something bigger, okay? So this is your portable mini towel in a bag. You're not gonna see this anywhere else. It even has my logo on it. Uh, CP, oh, that one fell out there. You can get them in packs of six or I think six or seven, or you can just buy them individually. Now the cool thing about this is, it's basically a towel, like a portable puck. Perfect for a bug out bag. All you have to do, even if you don't have water, you can expand it, but water is gonna make it expand much quicker. And uh, now we're just gonna pull it apart. I'm doing all this with no edits. So, trying to give you guys that authentic YouTube experience. So you can see how big this is. And it's actually very durable material. It's the same type of material as the toilet paper tablets, but just a little bit bigger, okay? Very, very durable stuff. Like very hard to break. It's not like paper towel or something. So you could use this for a variety of things. If you wanted to, you could cut it up into smaller pieces, but a really nice idea for a bug out bag. Obviously, if you're using it for number twos, it's not gonna be reusable, but you definitely could uh, reuse it for, you know, if you're just doing like a little bit of cleaning or something, you could rinse this out in the creek. But uh, I think it's just, uh, you know, just one of those things, right? It's all about portability and lightweight, and of course, disposability. You could use it as a fire starter, you could use it as an emergency bandage, as a triangular bandage, lots of things like that. So go and check that out. I'll post a link to that in the description. And I'll tell you what, if you guys place an order on Canadian Preparedness today, over a hundred bucks, I'm gonna throw in one of these for free, all right? Now, let's get to this video. Okay, werewolf preppers. Is this a silly idea? Let's talk about it. Let's put it in perspective, okay? If we have a prepper spectrum, okay, on the one end of the spectrum, you have 95% of the people who don't know what prepping is, could care less. These are the people who have no inclination to prepare whatsoever. They're the eternal optimists, latte sipping, people who are afraid to even carry a, a knife because you know they've been trained to believe that self-defense is a bad thing and is something that should be reserved to the authorities. Uh, you have those people on one end of the spectrum. On the other end of the spectrum, you have people who are preparing for the end of the world. They've uprooted their life. They've moved into a castle in the woods with a deep underground bunker to fit. And uh, these people want nothing to do with society. Okay, two opposite ends of the spectrum. We as normal preppers, prepping for uh, normal people, as I've heard it called. There's a great channel on here. It used to be a great channel. It doesn't really upload anymore. But... You know, that's where we kind of fit, somewhere within that gradient, okay? Now, the thing is, because only 5% of people really are preppers in the purest sense of the word, uh, the idea that a fraction of those people are going to be werewolf preppers or preppers who are going to, you know, turn into evil people when it all hits the fan and instead of preparing food and basic provisions like medical supplies, water, things like that, their whole strategy is going to be to steal from other people. Number one, I don't think a lot of these people exist. And if they do, they're very stupid people. Because when you think about it, the amount of um, resistance that you're going to face, even in the first altercation, is likely not going to be worth the squeeze, okay? so. If these people exist at all, if this is not just some straw man argument that we have preppers have created to, to make a concept to talk about in videos, 
Uh, I think they're very stupid because I think it's a dumb strategy. People like this are going to get wiped, taken out real quick. Uh, for starters, stealing from normal people is one thing. Stealing from well-armed preparedness people is another thing altogether. So I think this is, uh, I don't think we really have to be too concerned about this. Now, I will say, however, there's something to be said about people who are trained in self-defense, people who are trained in military tactics, employing those tactics after it all goes down, okay? And you can't discount the fact that there are going to be some people who you know, have these skills and abilities, which are going to be more capable of stealing from people after it hits the fan. And I liken it to the zombie movies where if you watch the, any zombie movie, it's typically not the zombies that people have to worry about in the end. You know, I mean, that's the, the main protagonist. But ultimately, within those movies, it's some other human, okay? And as a human, you know, when we talk about zombies as a metaphor for SHTF and preparedness, typically the zombies are a metaphor for the unprepared people who are, you know, coming through your windows, uh, trying to, to find a means of basic sustenance. That's what a zombie is in the uh, prepping metaphor. And it's not really them, though, because they're very one-dimensional, very predictable. You know, once you set up a good system, you can survive the zombies. It's the people, okay, who eventually become the biggest problem. It's the Negans of the world. It's the cannibals of the world, if we're looking at The Walking Dead. You know, all the main protagonists in The Walking Dead are other humans. Those can be considered, or uh, in some way, very similar to other preppers, okay? Now, I don't think that anybody out there is solely basing their strategy around I'm just going to steal from people and uh, rob and kill people after it hits the fan. For starters, I think that, that requires a very psychopathic mentality. I'm not saying they don't exist, but I'm saying that any prepper who, is, who has a modicum of intelligence is going to understand that it's much easier to, instead of buying an, an additional 200 rounds of ammunition, just stockpile a bit more rice, just stockpile a, a few more water filters, you know, just stockpile a few more med medical supplies. It's, it, it's much easier um, to do that. Now, when things get down to the wire, however, yes, indeed, I would say that the average prepper is going to be a greater concern than the average normie who doesn't prep at all. Because, of course, preppers have a different mindset when it comes to these sort of things. We're not criminals, per se, but because we are paranoid about uh, criminality, we kind of understand criminality. And we think the worst about things, so we're very precautious. So I could see preppers when, you know, if I had to take a prepper and a non-prepper, put them in a situation where you know, they both lost it all, I would be more worried about the prepper because you would think that they would have some more skills. They would probably have better uh, skills when it comes to using weaponry and tactics and, and various things like that, medication or medicine, uh, administering first aid. So yes, they would be a greater threat in that respect. But do I think that there's a lot of intelligent people out there making it their strategy to just loot and pillage and not stockpile or put, put aside anything at all? No. Do I think some gangbangers may make off-the-cuff statements like that? Probably. You know, I mean, if you're already living a life of criminality, it's not a stretch to presume that that would be your strategy after it all goes down. But by and large, anybody who makes that their strategy is a fool. You're stupid. Because how many times can you possibly use that as a survival mechanism? and not get hit, okay? It's just like, it would be like a lion hunting other lions. A lion hunting a gazelle is one thing, okay? These people, if they're going to prey on uh, anything, it's going to be something that's significantly weaker to them. And if you look in the animal kingdom, that's typically what happens, okay? The predator is only preying on something which is much, much weaker than them. Because if they weren't to do that, it's not a good survival mechanism because within a few kills, they would get seriously injured and they would die. So the strategy is always take out the youngest and weakest thing. Preppers aren't the youngest and weakest anything, okay? If anything, we're the hardest targets.
because our head's always on a swivel. We're ready for this. You know, when it comes to my own personal security, I mean, I'm always on with respect to that. Doesn't mean I'm walking around paranoid thinking that, you know, there's a bad guy around every corner. It just means that we're in that state of mind. We're not in this sort of passive latte sipping, you know, state of mind where we're in this uh, urban cocoon where everything is, you know, catering to our needs at every waking moment. So we don't have to think on our own at all independently. Um, anyways, so I don't think that this is going to be a major, major threat to preppers. Now, as you go deeper and deeper into collapse and you start having groups form, okay, you start having, that's when I would start to worry. Uh, the people you would need to worry about are militia groups, okay? If you live in a small community, you need to worry about local law enforcement. Uh, depending on what the politics of your local community are, you know, you may be in that club. Uh, but if you're not in that club, then you need to worry about that because these are the people who are going to have the official uh, government control after it hits the fan. And are they going to administer those powers in a way which is fair and democratic especially as things get worse i highly doubt it especially as you know communications between states and on the federal level uh start to dwindle with the counties and the municipalities and the townships i have a feeling that you're going to be up against some some real resistance and potential rogue law enforcement elements and this is not a, a slight against law enforcement at all it's just human nature okay when things get down to the wire if you live in a rural community or a small community i know it it's we intuitively presume that okay we're going to be out of the city we're going to be fine but you have to keep that in mind is that the more remote you get and the more part of a smaller community you get there's going to be politics there's going to be somebody who assumes a higher role in that community and starts calling the shots okay and if you're not at that round table uh you might be in trouble because you may be the one who has their their stuff taken or you know maybe you're the one who they force to grow food for the community or they take your farm equipment or they you know you got to think big too. Uh, a lot of people, if you have under six months worth of food, don't worry about the government or people taking your stuff. I mean, look, it's going to be a long time before we go from people stealing for sales to people stealing for sustenance. Okay, think about it this way. Right now, people steal to sell things to pawn shops. Okay, we're not at the point yet where people are stealing for sustenance. People aren't stealing, well, they're probably stealing gasoline now. They're <laughs> probably siphoning gasoline. Uh, there was a funny uh, Trailer Park Boys episode uh, about that where Ricky makes uh, Corey and Trevor go and they start this whole gasoline racket where they're siphoning gas and the, the boys get really sick and yeah, it's, it's hilarious. Anyways, don't do that, okay? But I'm sure people are stealing gas already. But, you know, when you start getting into people stealing food, that's when you know things are getting really, really bad. And I don't foresee that happening yet. I don't think that people are going into homes stealing food yet. However, you know, if things get bad enough, you know, if the dollar collapses, you know, anything is possible. Um, food theft and stealing for sustenance as opposed to sales is very likely. People are already stealing meat. And that's why a lot of places are now putting the meat behind lock and key because it's just too expensive and you have a $80 roast, you know, I mean, of course somebody's gonna try to steal that if it, if it costs that much money. Uh, medicine, of course, is another thing. And right now, at least, you know, until the full-on shizzy hits the fizzy, we really don't have to worry about people stealing for sustenance. At that point, the meso prepper, as I call them, the mid-tier prepper who has about six months worth of food, that's when maybe you have to worry about. I would be more worried about local law enforcement, gangs, looters, uh, rioters, things like that. Riots are, are a concern if you, because a, a riot is like this, this swarm that nothing can stop it. So if you live in an urban environment, that's a concern. Looters are functioning, you know, very one dimensionally like zombies, uh, easy to defend, 
if you have uh, the means to do so. And that's been demonstrated numerous times throughout history in, in riots in the United States. Uh, Well-armed people who have a plan for defense can usually, you know, uh, withstand any sort of uh, attempt at looting. But, you know, what you, the people you really have to worry about are the conquerors, uh, the psychopaths, the marauders, the militia groups, the rogue law enforcement, maybe the well-organized gangs, but I think a lot of them, a lot of gangs, their allegiances and their networks are built around the grid. And without the grid, I don't think they're going to last too long. Uh, they don't have the means of communication, especially. So this doesn't mean, though, that they don't have a lot of street smarts, okay? And this is not to underestimate. You definitely don't want to underestimate these lower level gangs because they do have a lot of street smarts. And you got to understand that they study people for a living. They size places up for a living. So what you're going to have to worry about most in SHTF is theft. Because like I say, no predator wants to face another predator. And... What is typically going to happen, I believe, is that you're going to be being sized up for a long time and you might not even know it, okay, when, when things get bad. And this is why it's important to always have your head on a swivel as, we, as economic times become more dire. Now, if we're talking about the nukes launch and uh, communication with the capitals goes down and it's just every city, every county, every municipality for itself, that is when, that is when it's 24-7 vigilance, okay? That is when I'm going to be more concerned about potentially losing my, my stuff, not necessarily to people who are, uh, who've planned for, it, to make that their strategy, because I really don't think those people exist. I mean, maybe they do, but they're so unhinged, uh, they're stupid. If anything, they're, they're psychopaths. It's like that one guy on the episode of Doomsday Preppers who his whole plan was, I think the episode was called We Are the Marauders and his whole strategy was we're gonna go and steal from people. You know, that just struck me as he took some delight in, in uh, sadistic behavior. There's gonna be people like that for sure. There's unhinged people who spent way too much time on the internet. You know, I, I'd be concerned about those types of people. Uh, people who are highly impressionable, okay? And uh, yeah, you got to worry a little bit about those people, but by and large, it's going to be people in your immediate vicinity. Nobody is going to drive out to where you are, you know, 200 miles. Uh, you're going to have to worry about the people who are within your locale. Okay, that's, that's just the reality of the situation. Now, the people who have to worry are people like farmers, homesteaders, okay, people who have sizable plots of land who have a lot of resources, who have heavy machinery. Maybe you're running a uh, logging operation or a firewood operation. Maybe you're uh, a blacksmith. Maybe you're somebody who has access to uh, various raw materials or a means of production, or you have a warehouse full of stuff, okay? Those are the people who are going to be primary targets in such a situation. But I don't think that anybody is, you know, war gaming in a really serious sense, you know, how to go and take these people out after it all hits the fan. If anything, the government has a plan for how they're going to how they're going to confiscate uh, various things and utilizing emergency powers acts under those situations. And that's where the the rogue law enforcement comes in because you know they are going to exploit whatever sort of ambiguous laws like that exist. And because it's ambiguous and because there's going to be the fog of SHTF and people aren't going to know, you know, what the what the rules are, what the laws are. You're not going to have an FBI to call, a state police to call. It's just going to be you against the sheriff at that point in time and his network of good old boys. You know, that's when you know, I would be concerned. And that's when you're probably going to see conflict between those groups, those networks who've established themselves as the governing bodies of uh, smaller rural districts 
and the people within those districts, the families within those districts. That's when you're going to have that conflict emerging. An example of what I think is people being a little bit too paranoid, and it really depends on where you live, is when we ship things out from Canadian preparedness, we no longer ship things with identifiable labels. We used to put a nice uh, fancy looking tape with our logo and stuff like that and uh, stickers on the boxes, you know, just, just kind of to accent, make the experience a little more interesting for people and just to show that we take great care in terms of shipping our products. But we stopped doing that because we had a lot of concerns about from people who were worried about uh, the mail person or the you know the person who works at the post office or somebody seeing that they're ordering prepping stuff. Uh, to me, this level of paranoia isn't really justified for starters. Mail carriers carry hundreds, if not thousands, of shipments a day. You know, in their trucks, in their pouches, in their delivery bags, whatever they carry. And so they're not, you know, this, this projection that the rest of the world cares about what you care about is a myth. The rest of the world, world carries about things that have convertible value, things that they can flip and that other people will buy. Because most people right now are stealing for sales, not for sustenance. Okay, the average thief out there doesn't want what preppers have. Yet in our mind as preppers, we're thinking that we need to be very secretive about all this stuff because you know we're worried about um, people wanting what we have. But to me, <laughs> you don't have to worry about that for, for the most part. Maybe if you live in a really small town and you have packages coming in on a daily basis and they say, you know, they're clearly preparedness related, maybe somebody at the post office, you know, will remember that if it hits the fan and uh, will be gunning for you. But I think a lot of these things are just sort of straw men that we create that aren't real threats, uh, if that makes any sense. But what do you guys think about this whole thing? Do you think that these werewolf preppers exist? Do you think that these types of people are really going to be forced to be reckoned with? Because I personally don't. I think anybody who has it as their primary strategy to go and steal from people isn't that smart because it makes much more sense to just stockpile that stuff yourself and uh, you know which is not to say they don't necessarily have the street smarts but I think a lot of those people who are going to do that wouldn't identify as preppers right now anyways a lot of those people are just going to be that by happenstance they're not going to have uh, strategized it at all and when I say that we're talking about you know gangbangers you know people who are just uh, you know, already not good people, and uh, they'll, they'll find any means of survival possible. So, you know, it could be anybody. Anybody can turn into a marauder after it hits the fan because everybody's going to reach a point of desperation. So, you know, the, the yuppie sipping latte right now, they could potentially be the biggest threat in SHTF because they're the ones who are the most ill-prepared and because we as a society are used to getting things right now so quickly and not being told no uh, those types of people could potentially be the the biggest problems and not because they're inherently evil but just because they're going to try to survive like any living thing would and if you have the means to share with people I would encourage you to do so because one thing that preppers often overlook is the power of human resources okay human beings are the most valuable commodities not to commodify human beings or human labor and, and look at it like human resources but it's the truth a human being is incredibly valuable especially if you trust that person okay so if you can find people that you trust leverage their skills leverage their their labor to an extent then that person is incredibly valuable, especially in a world where you're up against other groups of people. Manpower is going to be an asset. So, you know, we shouldn't just presume that right when somebody comes knocking at the door, because maybe they don't have anything to offer right now, 
that doesn't mean that they can't make a contribution. So it's not just shutting the door on every single person. Because you do that so much, then those people outside your property are going to start to add up. And uh, before you know it, there's going to be so many that you're just going to be overwhelmed. You're not going to be able to defend what you have. So it's almost strategic for you to get the jump on things, find people who you can trust, bring them into the fold, and when times get tough or maybe look at those people within your community and ask yourself, you know, who are these people can I trust? And maybe just have a list, have a, maybe not a list, but just have a vague uh, awareness of who you might call on when the going gets tough. Anyways, guys, I think I've rambled on long enough. If you want anything on the wall, most of this stuff we sell at Canadian Preparedness. You know, we went to Uncle Wiener's wholesale the other day, and a lot of that stuff, yeah, to be brutally honest, you know, it's made in China. It's, it's, I can't attest to the quality of everything. I'm sure there's some stuff, it, it's kind of hit and miss, okay? It's kind of 50 50. But on our website, we take great pride in only selling very high quality premium items because when it comes to survival items, guys, you don't want stuff to fail in the field. You don't want, you know, it's worth it to make the extra investment to get a premium product and only buy it once than to have to buy the same thing 10 times over. Oh, and yeah, like I said, we're gonna have a little sale, I guess, over at Canadian Preparedness. If you spend more than, what did I say, 100 bucks, you're gonna get one of these things thrown in for free. Great little thing to throw in your bug out bag. You won't even notice it. Super lightweight and very multi-purpose. Okay guys, so you guys take care. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about anything that I've talked about today and go check out our library of content that's related to topics like this. We go into great depth about gangs, uh, criminality, post SHTF. I just wanted to get you guys a, a Sunday video that was a bit more topical in nature and not so current events, but we got one of those coming. You better believe it. Thanks for watching guys. Stay safe. Canadian Prepper out.